Well, hello world, welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today we are going over the Fender Shields Blender. It's a fuzz pedal at its core, and it's a very unique pedal. It's kind of tough to get your head around at first, so it's definitely something that the manual helps with. It's one of those pedals that I strongly encourage you to read the manual before you mess around with it like I did. I did not read the manual before I recorded that song. Um, just twisted things and pressed things until I got sounds I liked. So I'll explain some of that to you while I'm going through this. The easiest part of this is the ins and outs. It's got an input for your guitar and an output to go to your amp. Awesome. So here's your master bypass for the whole thing. When there's no light, it's off. When it's red, it's on. This is, this switch is for your octave fuzz. And when it's red, the octave fuzz portion is off. Confusing. But when it's white, then it's on. And when, when that happens, um, some of the controls for the fuzz are changed. So I'll get into that in a second. Um, then you have this button is for your sag, so that's going to starve the circuit and give you sputtery types of effect and almost tremolo-ish, um, depending on your signal input level. And then on the very end is called expand, and that basically, um, takes the pillow off the fuzz. It, the, the fuzz, uh, the typical fuzz in here is kind of a big muff green Russian type of thing where it's pillowy and kind of doesn't have a lot of high end. But then when you hit this expand, you get that clarity and the blanket is lifted and it's more aggressive sounding. So I like both of them in the beginning of that, in the beginning track, I had it in its normal mode without expand on for the left guitar and the right guitar, I put expand on. So I had that more brighter sound. And then for the solo, I had the uh, expand on with the sag, and that's why it was like doing all that tremolo -y effect. I also had a non-lin reverb going into that, so that was what I did for that. I'm gonna do my best to explain this. When this is engaged and nothing else is going on, these are your controls for your fuzz. So you have your volume overall, you have your blend knob, so if you want to blend in your clean channel, um, you can. I will say though, when you do that, your volume drops considerably. So uh, it's you, you can find the sweet spot possibly to make it not drop as much. So I'm still getting there with this. Um, and then you have your tone knob, typical tone knob, and then you have a sustain. So that's how much distortion or fuzz you have, okay? So let's just go over that and then I'll go to the next circuit, if you will, all right? So these, four things are not being uh, put into the circuit as at this time. So here's my clean channel. It's the Fender Deluxe Reverb into the aux box and I have the cabinet and mic set up on the screen. All right, here we go. Right, so now I'm going to add the expand here and there's no other knobs to be messed with. It's the same four knobs. When you hit expand, it's just giving you a brighter and more aggressive sound. All right. So I'm going to play it without it and then bring the expand in so you can hear the difference. 
can still use the blend. Now I'm gonna try to bring in some reverse reverb and I have the Line 6 DL4 out of the shot right now. You might, you can see it here, boom, all right. Reminds me of a mix between a green Russian big muff, a triangle big muff, and a little bit of a fuzz factory in there. So it has that kind of gaty, noisy thing happening that the fuzz factory has. And then when, once I put these octave things in, you'll really hear that sound if you're familiar with the fuzz factory. Um, all right, so I'm gonna leave everything where it's at now and we're going to kick the fuzz octave in and when that's in this is your level for your fuzz this is your level for the octave they're independent and then you still have your tone and sustain so that's what happens your volume and blend here are no longer in the circuit i'll turn the fuzz off first and now we'll just hear the octave tracks very horribly but that's what we're i think that's what we want right i'm gonna take the octave down and just put the fuzz now this is your level of fuzz and i want to just test it with the other fuzz without the octave real quick so i'm going to take this out of the circuit So I guess it's basically the same fuzz, it's just a you have no volume control over here anymore. So that's why it can get a little confusing. But uh, I'm gonna add the octave in again. I'm gonna put the um, expand in again so we can have a little bit more brightness. 
And this switch works whether it's in this octave mode or not. And it's kind of unruly. And that reminds me of kind of like the hyper fuzz by Boss or the Fuzz Factory in certain settings. You get that kind of, you cannot play more than a bar chord or, without it sounding like just that. <laughs> so here's bar chord. Now we're going to add the sag. And the sag is over here. So this switch, I have these on stun. So this is the sag and the trigger. And you're gonna hear it tremolo kind of cut in and out. And when I stop playing, then start to play again, you'll hear it have, a tr have trouble getting the signal back again. So it's kind of like a broken amp type of thing. this isn't for everyone but if you're a my bloody valentine fan or a shoegaze fan in general then i mean you're watching this video and this is probably cool with you i'm gonna get this uh, camera angle up so you can see some other stuff now that i've shown you the what the pedal is doing i have the heavy metal waza that i am going to do a demo on soon i know it's old by now but it's actually a fuzz pedal Go figure, I didn't know that the whole time. Let me show you real quick. Isn't that crazy? Let's try this without any of this on. And I'm going to turn the octave off because I want to use this blend knob and I'm going to send the heavy metal into it and see what happens. All right, without it.
Anyway, so hopefully you have a better understanding about how this pedal works. It's actually simple once you get your head around it. In the beginning, it's very confusing. I recommend reading the manual if you do get this pedal and it will give you a better understanding of what you're doing instead of just turning knobs like I did in the beginning. All right, so if this helped you out, please hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the bell, share this with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.